Hey guys, so it is a very exciting time for Dokkan. We have the Dragon Ball Heroes collaboration about to begin. Uh, and so, of course, we have the official Dokkan account on Twitter here uh, giving us the information in advance of all the new characters coming, as well as the Dokkan Awakenings for some of the uh, prior characters. So, of course, we have the uh, modified Janemba, and then we have Golden Metal Coolers Dokkan Awakening. Um, I don't think they're going to be tweeting out the EZA info here. By the way, they're still tweeting out stuff, so I'm going to be refreshing this periodically as we go through here. But uh, let's just go in order. We have a lot to go through. Um, I don't really make breakdown videos about characters in Dokkan as much, but because there's so much to cover with the hero stuff, I figured it probably would be worth making a video about this. So let's start right away with Janemba. This is the first character that they tweeted here. So this is Janemba Modified. Um, stats are certainly not the greatest. I mean, what is that? Like 13,000 attack and 10,000 defense. Okay. All right. So passive is Dr. W's D. I actually would have really loved if they gave us a Dr. W unit maybe next year. Launches an additional attack that has a great chance of becoming a super when facing two or more enemies and guards all attacks for five turns from the character's entry turn. All right. We're already starting with my most hated mechanic in the game, which is... <laughs> A, a, an attack that has a great chance of being a super. That's awesome. But it's only when you're facing two or more enemies. Uh, guard, of course, is going to be guaranteed from five turns from this character's first turn, which is nice. That is definitely really good. Uh, attack and defense plus 40% per crossover category ally on the team up to 200%. So you'll probably see this uh, as a recurring thing as we go through the characters here. They like to restrict these Dragon Ball Heroes characters to the crossover team or Dragon Ball Heroes team. There's always some restriction associated with the characters here, so I would expect that to be the case as we go through some of the other units too. Uh, plus an additional attack, plus 80% with each attack uh, received, or sorry, performed up to 240%. So that is, that should be a multiplicative buff, I think. So, you, so assuming that you have a full crossover team and you're getting the full 200%, that's 200% attack and defense, and he's getting another 240% attack, assuming you take the, uh, what is that? Just it, That's only three hits that you need to receive with him. Okay. Then you, or sorry, three attacks you need to do with him, which he, you know, has, uh, I mean, if you're going up against multiple enemies, he can do multiple attacks. Then he has uh, defense plus 60% with each attack received up to 180%. So he's getting defense from attacks received and attack from attacks performed. Key plus two and great chance of performing a critical hit starting from the character's next attacking turn after the character performs or receives the fifth attack in battle. Performs or receives the fifth attack in battle, which is much more likely you're going to be receiving that, right, than, than performing the fifth attack. So. Okay, doesn't sound like you're going to really need to give this character a lot of crit. So this sounds like a you know, dodge slash additional unit, um, which is fine. Um, length wise, he has pretty good links. I mean, this is, you know, uh, pretty standard links that you would expect to see on a lot of villain characters. But unfortunately, this is going to be the main thing that I'm probably going to be mentioning as a downside to a lot of these characters, which is the fact that he is relegated to essentially being pigeonholed to, uh, you know, the crossover slash Dragon Ball hero team. Brutal beatdown, metamorphosis, big bad bosses, shocking speed, nightmare, fear and faith, and shining light. Like, that's a really strong villain link set. But unfortunately, you're not really going to be able to use him alongside a, a lot of other powerful villain characters. The few that exist in the game right now. Um, super deck effect, we have Rakasha's Radiant Bullet. Uh, supreme damage to enemy, raises attack and defense by 30%, and lowers enemy's attack and defense for three turns. Um, this wording is a little weird on this one. Raise attack and defense by 30% and lowers enemies attack and defense by 30 So I think, I think this is a 30% raise for three turns, I think is what this means. I don't think that's an infinite stack. I think he's lowering his own stats and, or sorry, he's uh, increasing his own stats and lowering the enemy stats for three turns each, I think is how that reads. Okay, so that was Modified Janemba. Let's move on to Golden Metal Cooler here. All right, so stat-wise, he kind of has a similar stat spread to the Janemba. Nothing really too much different here, right? Um, again, 13,000 attack, 10,000-ish defense, similar to what we saw with Janemba. Uh, okay, so passive is Overheated Awakening. 
attack and defense plus 200%. Then he gets an additional attack and defense plus 80% if HP is 50% or more when performing a super attack. Um, why is this comma here? I feel like this is a mistake, actually. Why is there a comma after the word more here? Because now I kind of now I'm kind of thinking that the 200 percent portion is also reliant on you being above 50 percent or more. I don't know. We'll see. Or sorry, uh, on you performing a super. It's weird. I, I think this is a mistake. I don't know why this comma is here. Okay, so it, the way it should be for this character is it should be a 200% uh, baseline stat, you know, start a turn buff, and then you should be getting the 80% when you perform a super attack if HP is 50% or more. I think that's commas weird. Uh, Lodges an additional attack that has a great chance of becoming a super attack. Dude, I hate this game. <laughs> this game, I hate this game. Why do they keep doing every character has this? Just make it guaranteed. <laughs> Why? Uh, reduce damage received by 20%. Just baseline, okay. Uh, key plus one up to five, plus an additional attack plus 40% of the 200%, and an additional damage reduction of 8% up to 40% per crossover category ally on the team. So he potentially could just have straight up 60% reduced damage received or damage reduction, which is actually pretty damn good. 60%, like once we get to the point where it's 60% damage reduction, that is powerful. So that, that is good. Um, so he's getting five key, which means you don't have to ever worry about getting key with this character, which is actually pretty nice. Um, I would imagine that because he's probably going to be relegated to the Dragon Ball Heroes team or crossover team, you might otherwise have found um, instances where it might be difficult to get the key for this character, but not with this passive, which is pretty good. Um, and then 200% attack. So he's basically starting with 400% attack, and then he's getting another 80% attack on super, which is really strong. That is a lot of attack. <laughs> that is a lot. Um, okay. And then character's super attack will be sealed if HP is 20% or less at start of turn. Okay, that, that's just thematically the character, I guess, is why they added that. Um, yeah, I'm just not a huge fan of him having a great chance of get, doing another super. Like, obviously, it's a good mechanic, right? It, it, is a, it is a strong ability, but I just hate that design because it's like, if you're going to make a character with a 70% chance to have a super attack be activated, just make it guaranteed. Like, if you're comfortable with 70%, just make it 100. Or if you're not comfortable with being 100, make it 50 and then give the character a some sort of compromise where they have something else that's buffed about their kit, right? I hate I hate 70% because whenever you fail it, it makes you feel terrible. Uh, okay, super attack effect, we have the golden metal supernova. Wow, he gets a 50% raise. Greatly raise attack and defense for one turn and causes supreme damage. Okay, that's, I mean, this, this guy could super three times in a turn, right? That's pretty good. So he's getting 60% damage reduction. He's getting a 50% attack and defensive raise every time he supers during the turn. He's getting the 80% uh, stat buff on super attack if you have 50% or more HP. Like, this guy's actually looking pretty good. Strongest clan in space, auto regeneration, fusion, deficit boost, shocking speed, cold judgment show. Obviously, his link said it's not good, right? So. Of course, he's going to be relegated. To, I think the reason why they made his uh, passive actually as good as as good as it is, is because you're not getting any of these links active on the team. You're not getting auto regeneration, deficit boost, fusion, like none of these links are active. So they kind of knew that going into this. So I think that's why they made it uh, a bit better than normal. I think this guy actually looks pretty strong. I, I do like this. OK, let's head over to one of the new. So those are the two awakenings for characters that we got last year that didn't Dokkan awaken last year. Now we're going to be moving on to the newly summonable characters. So this is going to be the first newly summonable character, Dark King Fu. Let's see what he got here. Um, again, I, I would just assume that all these characters are going to have similar stats. Maybe like Rose and Vegeta are going to be the exceptions here because they're the, the two headlining characters. So we'll see. But stat wise, this guy's not really looking too different than uh, the two awakenings we just we just looked at. OK. He's a Battle of Wits leader. Hmm. All right, so his passive is Dark King's Universe Creation. Attack and defense 150%, plus an additional attack and defense plus 150% when performing a super attack. Okay, that's actually already pretty good. 
We're starting off pretty good. As a baseline for the stats of this character, 150% start a turn and then 150% on super, that's strong. Like that, that multiplicative 150% off of the 150 base, like that's, that's a pretty strong, you know, amount, amount of stats he's getting from that already. Extreme class allies attack and defense 30%. Okay, now we're, yeah, that, that is certainly a good start for uh, my boy Fu here. Randomly changes key spheres of a certain type, STR excluded, to STR key spheres when there are another three or more crossover category allies on the team. Okay. So he is limited to crossover, but it's not in a way that makes him unusable if you don't get this mechanic active. Like if you're running this character on like, I don't know, let's just say uh, Realm of Gods. I don't know, let's just make it up. You're running this character on Realm of Gods and you don't obviously have the crossover condition fulfilled. He's not STR orb changing. Fine. Like, I don't really care that much. He's still probably going to be a usable character without having that mechanic active. Uh, okay. Then he gets an additional attack plus 100% with uh, with a STR key sphere obtained. With one STR key sphere obtained. That's not that tough to do. Obviously, it makes it a lot more easy to do when you have the orb changing active, but it's not like a make or to break it mechanic. Uh, chance of evading enemies attack, including super attack, plus 10% up to 50%. And extreme class allies key plus wait what? Extreme class allies key plus one up to five. He's giving five key to extreme class allies. Plus an additional attack and defense plus four percent up to twenty percent per STR or rainbow key sphere obtained. Whichever key sphere is collected more will be counted. Okay. That changes things a little bit, I guess. Um, that is a, that is actually a very interesting mechanic here. So he can give five key support to extreme characters. Hmm. This I actually you know what I, I actually like this design, even though this character is probably going to be fairly reliant on having a crossover team or at least three or more crossover category allies on your team because that is pretty important to get alternatively alternatively i think it's i think it's at least worth mentioning that even if you don't have a crossover uh you know um the the, the crossover condition fulfilled here you can still get this activated via rainbow key spheres which means you can run a rainbow orb changer on the team and have Fu get a lot of these mechanics active anyway. So this character potentially can be supporting extreme class allies, 50% attack and defense and five key. And then he has a 50% chance to dodge. And he has a very strong, just like stat spread, baseline stat buff, start a turn plus, you know, on super. I'm liking this guy's design actually. I think this is a pretty interesting character. Um, his link set is certainly going to be a little bit annoying, though, probably. Demonic Power, Brainiacs, Cold Judgment, Big Bad Bosses. Okay, that's good. Godly Power, Fear and Faith, and Fierce Battle. Yeah, I mean, he seems fine. Surprise Judgment is Super Attack. Raises defense for one turn, Supreme Damage, and Seals. Yeah, he gets the defense on Super Attack as well. I'm liking this character. I think, I think he actually seems pretty cool. That's good. Off to a good start here with the summonable units. All right, next we have Super, Full Power, Saiyan 4, Limit Breaker Broly. <laughs> Nice name. Um, okay, so stat-wise, he's going to be, you know, sub 13,000 attack. Not that good. Um, with that 12,800 attack, he's going to have 11,000 defense. So a little bit higher defensively, I guess, than what we've seen so far. Not not by much, though. Just a little bit. Um, okay. So his passive is Limit Breaking Devil. Key plus three, attack and defense plus 200%. Then he gets an additional attack and defense plus 100% when attacking. That's I think people are going to overlook this, right? This is actually the same exact thing that happened when people saw the uh, when they released the original Super Saiyan 4 Broly, not the Limit Breaker version, like the old one from a few years ago. He's actually getting an easy A this, uh, this celebration. Um, like he was very bare bones, like he was uh, attack and defense start a turn and then he got like attack and defense on Super and like people didn't understand how powerful that interaction was because of how high the numbers were. Like that Broly actually hit super hard. 
and it looks like it's going to be similar. I mean, he's starting with 200% attack and defense, and now he's getting another 100% on super attack effect. Like, I mean, not super attack effect, on um, super attack via the passive. That's a big, like, that that 200% base, like, that is, that's that's high. 200%, that he's getting 100% attack, um, attack and defense when attacking. That's not insignificant. I'm not saying it's going to be some crazy, ridiculous number, but that's not insignificant. So, uh, kind of similar to the Fu character we just looked at, right? 150, 150. When attacking, launches an additional attack that has a high chance of becoming a super attack. Okay, this, I'm not, I'm not as against this. When it's just a 50% to do a super attack, I actually prefer that than 70%. And the main reason why is because... I don't understand the, the design philosophy behind making a 70% chance, 70%. Like, just have it be 50 or 100. No, like, none of this, like, in-between stuff. We don't need that. Uh, okay. Launches an additional super attack when facing two or more enemies. Launches another additional super attack that has a great chance of becoming a super attack when there is a fused fighters category enemy. Um, so a lot of conditional super attack stuff here. Um, yeah, uh, so two or more enemies, he has a, an additional super, then he has another 70% chance when there's a fused fighter category enemy. So the interesting thing about the fused fighter condition is, of course, that actually does, you know, take into consideration fusion Zamasu, which of course is a very tough red zone stage, but the problem with that is this guy is int. So uh, I don't really know how, uh, <laughs> how, how brave you want to be and try and test this character out against uh, the physical fusion Zamasu character or not, but it technically does count. Uh, Brutal Beatdown, Saiyan Warrior Race, Super Saiyan, Prepare for Battle, Nightmare, Saiyan Roar, Fierce Battle. Okay, I mean, I, honestly, if, I, if we're gonna if we're gonna say does this character compare to Fu, I'd say Fu to me looks a lot more interesting, and I think Fu is going to make for um, a lot of an easier, a, a much more easier character to build a team around for him to contribute to the team more than this Broly is. But I think it's it would be foolish to discount how much damage this Broly probably will be able to do here. But we'll see. I'm not really a huge fan of the design of this character. Uh, gigantic cluster is a super attack. Raises defense for four turns and causes supreme damage. Four turns. Yeah, so if you have one of these turns where, like, you're going up against multiple enemies or there's a, there's a fused fighter category enemy that you're fighting, like, and you get multiple supers off, like, at that point, this Broly's defense might be able to look pretty dumb. But I, I don't know. I, I'm not really feeling it with this Broly. We'll see, though. I, I, I still think it, it, it's he's going to be doing some good damage, I think. All right, now we have Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan Vegeta Berserk Controlled. <laughs> By the way, if uh, we were to look at all of the new characters coming out from the Heroes Celebration here, and we were to take into consideration how good the actual Heroes cards of these characters are, this Vegeta has the best Heroes card. This Vegeta's Heroes card was pretty expensive when he came out because of how good the card was. So... We'll see if they uh, take that into account when they design this Vegeta here. All right. So the passive is investigating the true nature of Saiyans. Actually, let me just see his stats. Uh, okay, so he'll have a bit higher. It's health, 13,000 ish attack, and then, you know, 10,000 ish defense. All right, so key plus three, attack and defense plus 180%. That's the baseline. Key, extra key is nice. There's a lot of categories. Look at that. <laughs> okay. Uh, medium chance of performing a critical hit. Okay, so you're probably not going to want to go too much crit on this guy. Plus an additional attack and defense, plus 50%. And chance of performing a critical hit, plus 10%. Per Dragon Ball Heroes category, ally, self-excluded, attacking in the same turn. So um, he's going to be able to have an extra 20% crit from that. So he's going to have, assuming you have the uh, Heroes condition fulfilled, he'll have a 50% chance to crit, which means that you don't really need to invest in crit for this character. Okay. And then he can get an extra 100% stats from that as well. Uh, plus an additional attack and defense, plus 40% with each super attack performed. So when he performs three super attacks, he'll be maxed out at the 120% buff there. Plus an additional attack and defense, plus 120, sorry, uh, just attack. Plus an additional attack, plus 120%. And chance of performing a critical hit, plus 50% when facing only one enemy at start of turn. Okay, so he's gonna have 100% chance to crit. He has a 100% chance to crit. <laughs> okay. So you don't... Yeah, you really don't need crit on this character. 
Um, launches an additional super attack and high chance of evading enemies attack when facing two or more enemies. There's a lot of that in this uh, batch of characters. When facing two or more enemies, these guys are getting a lot of extra stuff. I wonder if they're going to give us some like new red zone stage for Dragon Ball Heroes that are going to have multiple enemies in it. Because that there's a lot of that here. Okay, I mean, guaranteed crits is pretty strong. I'm, I'm not really entirely sold on this character defensively. What is the super attack effect? Ignite, strike, raises defense for one turn, disables enemies guard, and causes supreme damage. His damage is going to be good, but I, I don't think defensively this guy's going to cut it. I don't. So far, Fu to me still looks like the best uh, new character so far. All right, so now we are getting to the two headliners. We have, of course, uh, Crimson Masked Saiyan Super Saiyan Rose 3. <laughs> And then we have these Vegeta. So we'll start with Rose and then we'll move on to Vegito after this. So this is obviously a transforming character. So we're going to have multiple forms to look through here. This is going to be a bit of a longer video. It's fine. Uh, stat wise, he's going to be at around, again, 13,000. It's not really much different, honestly, than the other character. So about 13,000 attack and then um, like 11,000 ish defense. Okay, let's see what else we got here. Uh, so his leader skill is Dragon Ball Heroes Super Saiyan 3 or transformation boost, three key, 170. And then the extra 30%, of course, is for crossover, which makes sense. Um, passive is pursuit of greater power. So he's got key plus three, attack and defense, 180%. Then he gets an additional attack and defense plus 150% when attacking. That's really good. 180 base and then 150 when attacking. We're already off to a good start here. High chance of guarding all attacks. <laughs> okay. Uh, all we got to do is we got to hope that the post transform version just guards. That's all we got to do. Just put guard on post transform version and we're good. Um, uh, or they can implement an update that tells us when guard is active. That would be nice. Uh, plus an additional defense plus hundred percent and guards all attacks when they're, oh, okay. There we go. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, when there are another three or more crossover category allies in the team. So he is guaranteed guarding and he's getting an additional 100% defense when you have a full crossover team, which you're probably going to have anyway, right? Um, launches an additional attack that has a great chance of becoming a super attack when there is an enemy whose name includes Goku. And then he transforms when conditions are met. Does this have the transformation conditions? It does. Uh, turn five. Okay, I'll take that. Turn five is not that bad. Right. I mean, there's circumstances where, I mean, it could have been better than turn five, but there are, uh, I would say, a lot more circumstances where it could have been significantly worse than turn five. So, you know what? I will take turn five. I'm not going to complain about this at all. Let me just quickly check the super tech effect here. Raises attack. That's an infinite stack, I believe. Raises defense for one turn and causes immense damage. So the defense raise should be for one turn, and the attack, I think, is infinite. Uh, links, we have Brutal Beatdown, Super Saiyan, Godly Power, Prepare for Battle, Nightmare, Fear and Faith, and Fierce Battle. Damn, they didn't give him big bad bosses. We've seen, because assuming you're going to use this guy on an extreme crossover team, right? I mean, that's where you, his, he's probably going to find his home. Um, you have characters like Janemba like Fu, who have big bad bosses. So you're not going to be able to activate big bad bosses with this guy. He's on a lot of teams, but I don't really know if this matters, right? Because you're not really going to, you're not really going to use this guy on a lot of other teams, I don't think, because you need to get that guard. Okay, so that is the pre-transform version. And then once you transform into this guy, into Crimson, Mass Saiyan, Super Saiyan, Rose Full Power, his passive becomes increasing the limits, recovers 40% HP once only, and from the next turn onward, recovers 15% HP at start of turn. Okay, so he's healing every turn, which is nice, I guess. Um, so on turn five, oh, I guess not, not on turn five. Wait, is it turn, is it turn five? Yeah, it's, it's just turn five in general. It's not his fifth turn. Let me just make sure. Yeah, fifth turn. So on turn five, or I guess potentially turn six, depending on whatever turn you're going to get this character on. When he transforms, you're going to get the 40% HP. That's pretty good. 40% healing is that I'll take that. Uh, he gets key plus four attack and defense plus 200%. Then he gets an additional 150% attack and defense when attacking. 
raises attack and defense by up to 150%. The more HP remaining, the greater the stat boost. Guards all attacks, unconditional. Launches an additional attack that has a high chance of becoming a super. And if there is an enemy whose name includes Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan, launches another additional attack that has a great chance of becoming a super attack. Um, I mean, dude, there's, there's got to be new red zone here, right? They, they have to do a new red zone stage that has like some sort of Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan in, in there. I, th I mean, there has to be. Well, they, they made this character specifically to take down the uh, the, the the Vegito Blue event. No way, because he's physical. This, this Rosé is physical. I don't know. Um, what is the super deck effect? The, div the Divine Light of Destruction. Raise attack and defense for one turn and causes immense damage. Yeah, he seems good. I mean, he's not really doing anything special, but he has guard. He has a lot of high numbers, and that's the character. <laughs> that's essentially what he, what he is. He's a he's a big stat character that has guard. Okay, sure, I'll take it. We'll see. We'll see how well he actually performs. Uh, and then last but not least, we have Vegito. So this is going to be super full power Saiyan Four Limit Breaker Vegito Zeno. Uh, the final new summonable character of this year's Dragon Ball Heroes collaboration. Uh, leader skill, we have Dragon Ball Heroes, Giant Ape Power, or Fused Fighter, and then the extra 30% uh, stat raises for crossover. Okay. Giant Ape Power, I guess is nice. It doesn't really matter that much. Um, the passive is Sword That Cuts Through Darkness. Activates the entrance animation upon the character's entry once only, which is nice that he has that, at least, uh, because we know he also has an active skill. Um, and chance of performing a critical hit plus 30% and reduced damage received by 30% for six turns. That's strong. 30% damage reduction and crit for six, like six turns is not insignificant. That is the length of most of these tough fights, honestly. Like you go into the Dismal Future Red Zone, most of those fights are lasting like seven turns max. So this is gonna be active for most of those, which is nice. Uh, three key. And then he gets 200% attack and defense. Then he gets an additional attack and defense plus 150% performing a super attack, which is good. Really strong numbers there. Uh, actually, what are his stats? Let me just quickly check. Yeah, not much different. It's, it's going to be around the same. You know, 13,000 attack and then uh, 11,000 ish defense. Okay. Um, then he gets an additional attack and defense plus 100%. And a great chance of launching an additional super when there is another giant eight power or crossover category ally attacking in the same turn or a giant eight power or crossover category enemy chance performing a critical hit plus 40 percent and reduces damage received by 30 percent when all allies attacking in the same turn are giant eight power or crossover so he's gonna have 60 percent damage reduction and a 70 percent chance to crit Assuming you have the full crossover condition, which is very easy to do. Hmm. What is the super attack effect? Galactic Spirit Sword. Raise a damn. They didn't give him defense on the super attack effect. I was I was about to say this guy would be even if he just had 30% for one turn, he'd be he'd be a monster. 30% attack for one turn. And immense damage. Okay. And then his uh, active skill is the Galactic Eternal Sword. Can be activated when all allies attacking in the same turn are crossover category allies starting from the third turn or just the sixth turn. Greatly raise attack temporarily, cause ultimate damage to enemy, and within uh, this turn activated, all attacks become crits. So that actually doesn't really matter that much because he's already he already has a 70% chance to crit. So like giving him the guaranteed crit on top of that doesn't matter that much. It's nice that he has it, but it's not it's not really going to matter that much. But that's nice. He can do it on turn three. That's pretty good. What typing is this guy? He's AGL. Um, OK. Yeah, I. <laughs> so th there there's a lot of characters in this batch that have great chances to super. I just absolutely dude, I I can't describe how much I hate that mechanic. I'm not going to talk about it anymore because I know people are getting annoyed at me for talking about it every single time, but I actually despise that mechanic so much. Um, but yeah, there we go. Those are, let me just refresh and make sure there's something new here, but that should be everything. All the new, uh, yeah, that's everything. Um, so of course we have, by the way, we have eight easy A's incoming for the celebration as well, which of course we don't have uh, prior knowledge on here. So we can't go over that right now, but 
Uh, when we have the data download, which should be tomorrow, we'll actually have access to everything. So we'll be able to see the easiest stuff. So, um, but in terms of the new summonable characters and the awakenings for last year's metal cooler or metal gold metal cooler and uh, Janemba modified, that's everything. Let me know down below what you guys think if I had to sort of like rank the characters here. You know what? I actually think in terms of design, I'm going to give the gold medal to Fu. I think Fu has the most interesting design out of all these new characters. I'm not saying he's necessarily going to be the best of the new characters, but in terms of just design, I, I like his design the best. Um, Brawly seems a little bland to me. This Vegeta seems a little bland to me. Uh, honestly, Rose's and Vegeta's also seem a little bland to me, but I mean, at least Rose has like guard and then Vegito has um, just like the really strong uh, damage reduction and crit and stuff like that. So hopefully you guys enjoyed. Let me know what you think of the incoming characters. 30 minute long breakdown video for Dokkan. Not very common for me, but a lot of stuff to cover. Hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you all in the next one.